Sandy and it's been a long time I've been in front of the camera, it feels like. I haven't really filmed since I was in Boston and that was a long time ago, so, well it's been a week. That's probably something that you're going to, you know, if you have subscribed, thank you. I doubt that I will be able to be as prolific with videos as I was over the summer because my job teaching starts up again on Tuesday uh, and I am hurriedly getting my syllabus ready over there. <laughs> I have like four work documents open at once. It's it's a nightmare. Um, and I have to come up with two different syllabi because I'm teaching at two different universities. Well, one university, one college. And they all have different standards and different requirements and different textbooks. Ah! Understandably, from your point of view, I hope I will not be putting up as many videos as often as I did over the summer. But I still want to you know, I want to try for at least one a week, hopefully filming on, like, Thursday afternoon and having it up sometime after that, but I'm not going to put that as a strict promise because even though I'm only teaching three classes, sometimes teaching, like, even one feels there's just so much more work than one expects going into it. So, without any further ado, after this long intro, I now want to discuss my booktubeathon experience, like my wrap-up, since I um, didn't get to make any videos at the end of the booktubeathon, being that I was in Boston for the, you know, I was driving to Boston and being in Boston for the last two days, and therefore I didn't really get any reading done, and that sucked, but, you know, I got a lot done. I got my major goals done uh, for booktubeathon during the time I was here. You know, and the farther that I get away from the end of Booktubeathon, the less I remember, so I want to do this before I barely have any recognition, and before I have to take all of these back to the library. So, let me go get the list of challenges, and we will discuss it. There were, as I'm sure anyone watching this knows, seven challenges. I completed five of them, I think, which isn't bad for only five days. And I want to say, I enjoyed Booktubeathon so much. It was so great to feel like a part of that, of the Booktube community uh, in that way. I participated in lots of the reading sprints and, um, you know, followed Twitter pretty religiously that during that time. It was so much fun and I'm so grateful for all of the people putting it together and doing that. And I can't wait till next year, or I've heard there's a Christmas one, I'll try to take particip- God, every time I say take participation instead of just participate. Why? <laughs> okay, moving on. Anyway, what I did, and most of this has already been revealed if you've watched my, you know, daily updates, but whatever. So, read a book with blue on the cover. I did that first. I finished reading Maggie Stiefvater's The Dream Thieves. I really enjoyed this, way more than I enjoyed The Raven... whatever it was. Boys, yeah because Ronan is my favorite and he's a lot more of a character, he's a much more prominent character in this book and I really, like the end of this book has me really wanting to go forward into Lily Blue, Blue Lily, um, so much that I actually want to buy that one and I'll probably end up getting this one too. But something that Maggie Stiefvater tweeted the other day has me very nervous about Ronan. Spoilers, don't tell me, don't tell me. So, but my favorite character out of this I think was probably the Grey Man, like I love the Grey Man. The romance with... This is so cute. Anyway, so, yes. One challenge down. I did not read How Are You My Mother by Alison Bechdel. Failed that one. Read someone else's favorite book. Half Bad by Sally Green was my choice um, because of Benjamin Atomes. And I did read it, and I really like it. Uh, but I think the next one will be even more up my alley because the end of this one was, like, getting to be the dark and gritty stuff, which is what I really like. Did anyone, like, I don't know, by the end of this, I was imagining, like, his physical transformation that he describes, I was imagining him looking like the guy from the reboot of Transporter. Did anyone else have that? I don't know. So that's two down. The last book that I acquired, which was... I have written down Air of Glass, but I assume I meant Air of Fire. <laughs> did I love this book and oh man do I love Rowan. I'm still team Cole for in the relationship category. I want Cole and Selena to be together but um, Rowan is definitely my favorite character because he's awesome. Yes. So that was 
That was big. Oh wait, I read this first, didn't I? Yeah, I finished this. Yeah, okay. Read a book without letting it go. And I did indeed do this. I made sure that I did not let it go. And I read The Game of Thrones graphic novel volume two um, by George R. R. Martin and two people whose names are covered up by the tag. Daniel Abraham and Tommy Patterson. Um, I liked this one too. It's, I'm really surprised by how well they portray the story of Game of Thrones, despite there being so much going on and you have so little time to do it in. Like, this gets, the end of volume two gets you to around, like, hmm, probably episode four or five, I don't remember very well, of the series, uh, probably, I don't know how far into the actual novel, which I have read. If you really want to read a graphic novel and you really love Game of Thrones, I'd go for it. I'd say the show is much, like, that's the other thing. If I, I may have already said this, but if I had not read the books or seen the show, I'm not sure how well I would understand this, because I can't erase that knowledge, so who knows. So, that's it. <laughs> really? No, that's not it. I also finished... I also finished The Yellow Wallpaper and Other Stories by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Feminist... Vic feminist stories. And it was good. My favorite is still the first one, though. The titular... The eponymous Yellow Wallpaper. That's what I read for Book Two a -thon 2015. And I'm so glad that I did that because it got me through so many of the books that I was, you know, like halfway through and really wanted to get through but didn't really have the push until there was that external motivator of Booktubeathon. So, the other two books that I read while I was in Boston, I read some of Jeff Vandermeer's Annihilation, the first book of the Southern Reach trilogy, which I bought at the Harvard Bookstore. I'm on page 20. I didn't get very far because I can't really read in the car. And, uh, this was... I like it so far, and I love the covers of all of these books. They're beautiful, and I I admit I this was mostly cover lust, but also the plot sounds really cool. It's about four women who go uh, on an excursion to figure out what happened in this place, and then uh, she's sort of hinted all or the, the narrator, although the author is male, the narrator is female, the narrator, but she has hinted that they're all gonna die real quick. So, waiting for that. And the other book, I'm currently Getting back into is Rook by Sharon Cameron, I think. Yes, I remembered the name correctly. Sharon Cameron's Rook, uh, as part of the Peru's Utopia, if that's what it's called, book club on Goodreads. And I was on page 60 for a really long time, uh, but last night I read about 30 pages before I went to sleep. And, like, I was stuck at this one scene where the girl's trying to get out the window, and I just kept falling asleep whenever I tried to read it. So I pushed through, and I'm really glad I did, because it's picking up again. Not that it's really slowed down, I just, for some reason, that scene, like, it was, like, taking some NyQuil. Hopefully, I will finish this shortly, because I want to read many things. I'm always wanting to read many things, but right now, I want to read this. And then I want to read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde because I'm going to teach it in my Comp 1 class. And it's like 75 pages, and I haven't read it yet, though, so that's a bit of a problem. I have to make sure before I'm going to teach it that it's actually okay, but I think it will be. I wanted to teach Frankenstein really bad, but I'm like, eh, I read that in a 4,000 level literature class. Don't know that I can teach it at Comp 1 level. novella, they should be able to handle it. I just have to say, I think A Darker Shade of Magic is the most perfectly sculpted book I've read in a while. It <clears throat> so, in the middle of a tirade about a gathering of shadows and A Darker Shade of Magic and how it's the most perfectly written novel I've read this year, how everything is subtle and beautiful and wonderfully woven and I just love it, my camera decided to be bored and shut itself off. So, um, now I'm filming the end of this video again. And saving you from much blabbering on my part about the beauty and brilliance of V.E. Schwab's prose.